I'd like to bring the Board of Public Works meeting of November 16th to order. Before we get started, I'd like to ask if anybody besides LCAT is recording. Shirley Tancredi for the minutes. Okay. And our first item of business would be to re review and approve the minutes of the meeting of November 2nd. So moved. Second the motion. Any further discussion on them? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That's approved. We also need to review and approve the minutes of the executive session. So moved. November 2nd. So moved. Second the motion. All in favor, roll call. Aye. Aye. Mr. Wilson, aye. Do we have to do no. that? No, we're not no. to do that. No. No. Aye. Going, going in. Okay. We're all approved. <laughs> yeah. Aye. All right. And we'll move right on to Bob Parent's superintendent report. Thank you. We have what I think is a pretty short agenda tonight. Um, That's what you always say. I know. It is what I always say. So, uh, the first couple of items I had were really just to go over a couple of upcoming schedule items to get them on the board schedule. Uh, first one is tomorrow evening at 6.30 at the Council on Aging. Uh, the Appropriations Committee has invited the board and myself, as well as other elected boards, into a presentation. Um, they provided really only a little bit of information, but I believe the intent of it is to talk about the town's overall financial situation and to talk about um, the, ten the potential that the town has to start approaching the $25 per thousand levy at some point in the future. Uh, and beyond that, I don't know much more other than a, it's kind of a big picture talking about where we are and where we might end up being um, potentially in the future. Uh, the next meeting that I want to put onto the agenda is on December 1st. Again, the board and myself have been invited to attend a meeting with the Appropriations Committee uh, that's their typical annual meeting where they meet with all the departments and basically hand out the budget packets, the information regarding what they're looking for material um, as part of the budget development process uh, for fiscal 670 uh, and what format they're looking for that information in as what well. What time as would that be? That I believe is at 6.30 as well. And the and first again, one's at 6.30? That's correct. Um, and if they have any constraints or guidelines that they're looking for, that's typically the meeting in which that they, they present that information. Who was sponsoring the one last night? Uh, the Appropriations Committee. Both, both of them. That's correct. And then much further down the road, we do have a scheduled date to meet with the Appropriations Committee in February, February 2nd. And that is to meet to review the proposed DPW budget uh, once it's been submitted. I did want to note that we did meet the deadline of submitting our proposed capital budget to the Capital Committee, which was November 6th, with the backup information that they're looking for. Uh, they have not yet scheduled a meeting with the DPW uh, for reviewing and, and, and going over any questions that they might have relative to our submittal. But I expect that sometime in the you know next month or so, they will be set, uh, scheduling a meeting. Um, few other items. Um, the DPW is participating in what is known as the expanded swap or senior work assistance program. Um, as the board may remember, I believe at annual town meeting last May, uh, the voters approved an expanded program by which um, seniors can receive a, a um, reduction in their property taxes. Um, by agreeing to provide services to the community. Um, and this program has been expanded in that uh, the um, individuals uh, can provide up to 120 hours of time apiece um, and then get, a, get a, um, a reduction in their taxes based on the services that they provide. Um, we have been assigned two individuals, um, a gentleman, Mr. Stephen Bomier, um, who I believe Mr. Wilson is, is yep. familiar with. Uh, there were really two categories of work that we had identified. We really we wanted to look at things that we might not normally do with our staff or things that we'd like to do but may not always have time to, to work on. So uh, Mr. Bomier was signed up for assistance with gardening and landscaping to assist us with some of the landscaping tasks that you know we'd like to spend some additional time on um, in this upcoming year. And then another gentleman, Mr. Robert Bostwick, um, who has been designated to provide uh, maintenance assistance. My understanding is that he's a, a um, very adept tech, uh, technician, uh, 
mechanic, um, hobbyist, and that he has some very good technical mechanical skills that you know we could benefit from in terms of helping us to maintain our our um, fleet of lawnmowers and, and other types of service equipment. So we think we'd benefit from the assistance of both of these gentlemen. Some of these, some of the individuals that have signed up for the swap program will start as soon as January 1st. I believe that most of our, our two candidates will likely start come springtime because that's really when we have the need for the assistance. Where did you get to? Just to correct, although in, we're the only department that's getting to every other department. Some departments aren't getting any. Um, okay. Some are being shared. For instance, I think um, there is a, a person who's being shared between the planning office and the assessor's office to provide uh, backup uh, counter coverage and things like that when needed. Moving on, I did provide the board with a, a draft copy of our proposed sewer contract with the Springfield Water and Sewer Commission. Um, in going through that draft contract, there's a number of technical questions or issues that I have with the contract that I will intend to put in writing and then discuss with the board. Um, there are a couple of legal items that I'll likely reach out to Mr. Donahue to consult with as well. Um, and I did want to let the board know that Springfield Water and Sewer Commission has agreed to push the meeting to discuss that contract back. It was originally scheduled for tomorrow and they recognize that that really did not give communities enough time, so they've pushed that back to December 8th. So they've given us a couple more weeks to review and comment on the draft contract. Before we go final with any sort of comments, I expect I'll reach out to other communities that are served by the same contract, such as Agawam and Longmeadow and West Springfield, to, to see if we're all on the same page. There may be some pieces of the contract that are unique to communities, but in general, Springfield is typically putting the same contract out. Too, right? Correct, yes. Yeah. Ludlow does as well, yeah. 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 So that'll be coming up in the future. Um, let's see, we did receive a letter from the US EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, um, advising us that when they issue a new discharge permit to Springfield for the Bondi's Island Wastewater Treatment Facility, that the town of East Long Meadow will be listed as a co-permittee on that permit and what that means is that uh, we obviously don't own or operate Bondi's Island but we do have our own wastewater collection system our own sewer system so there are some conditions of the permit that will pertain to sewer system operation and maintenance and that the way the permit will be written those conditions will apply to us relative to our system um, it's an approach that EPA has been taking over the past couple of years, really focusing on uh, making certain that communities focus on proper operations and maintenance so they don't have sewer system backups, that they don't have essentially discharges that don't go to where they're supposed to go. Um, so if it's basement backups or backups through manholes, the really goal is to make certain that we maintain our system correctly so we don't have those or we have a minimum of those. Right. Let's see, moving down. Um, we do finally have a date for our fall crack sealing program. Um, crack Sealing Inc., who is the company who had done our crack sealing last fall as well, uh, will have two crews on, in town on Monday. Uh, they'll be completing about three miles of crack sealing um, over the next couple of days. So it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, something in that time frame. Um, and we've talked about before, they're going to be focusing on the last section of North Main Street from. Um, let me think about where just north of the stop and shop plaza where we stopped last so year like continuing harkness, to the harkness essentially harkness to, um, the city line. to the city line correct yeah. um they'll be working on on pleasant street from heatherstone to porter porter road from parker to allen um and then um we're also looking at chestnut as well uh, for both some of the areas that have been paved in the last several years to make certain that we keep those maintained and up to snuff. Um, so that work again will be happening early next week. Um, Mr. Wilson will be happy to hear that uh, Dan Murphy and I have a final draft of our generic notice of intent or bundled notice of intent okay. which will be intended to um, facilitate permitting through the Conservation Commission for uh, storm drain and road maintenance related activities. Um, 
what our game plan is in probably next week to put a draft of that out in front of the state as well as out in front of the Conservation Commission so we can talk about it, make certain that they're happy with it before we submit the final draft. But I, I've gone through it multiple times now and I'm pretty comfortable with where we, we are where we need to be right now. So that as we start looking, particularly this upcoming spring, to some of our maintenance activities, we'll have the permit in Some of the other things that we talked about last fall. Those, Correct. Where we walked out there. Right, right. And really the intent is to um, allow the DPW to move ahead with conditions, you know, uh, prescribed conditions in advance, but to do some of our normal maintenance type activities that might require an individual permitting process to kind of generically permit those activities such as cleaning storm drains, cleaning catch base, or not cleaning um, culvert outfalls, things like that, that we need to do and we need to have approval. This gives us the approval in advance to do these activities. Do we have to submit them in advance to the conservation? Or it just gives us the opportunity and just allows us to go and do them? It, there's really three different categories of activities. There's some categories um, which are completely exempt. Um, just the way the regulations are written, for instance, we can essentially do anything we need to do with a water or sewer utility line. Um, whether it happens to be in a wetland area or not in a wetland area, we can maintain it, we can replace it, we can repair it uh, without requiring any permit because those activities are completely exempt mm -hmm. from the Wetland Protection Act. Then, depending on the items that, and it's primarily storm drainage and roadway related activities that aren't exempt, um, some of them are pre-notification activities and some of them don't require any notification. Or culvert cleaning, does that require? Um, in some cases, in, that? in some cases, depending on where we are working. If we're working adjacent to a wetland area, if we're strictly working in a in a channel that dries up in the spring and dries up in the summertime, and there's no water and no wetlands or anything like that that we have to deal with. Yeah. So it does. It depends on the activity, a little bit, and the location of the activity. Um, and then we are Dan and myself are working on as we've talked about before, starting to do some of the investigative work for potential road paving projects next year. You know, we want to get out there and do some test scoring and test boring, and we, we held off because we needed to get Mass DOT approval of that work before we could get it funded under our Chapter 90 funding, and we now have that approval. So we're, we're now good to go to start looking at some of the streets that, you know, potentially we may be looking at in the next year or two. Um, Allen Street is one where we want to do some investigative work, take a look at pavement depths, take a look at gravel depths. Right. Um, Porter Road from Parker Street to the town line as we're heading east is is getting to be in pretty difficult shape. Heading towards Wilbraham? Heading towards uh, Wilbraham. section by the golf Correct. course? Yeah. yeah. Those are two that come to mind, but they're by yeah. no means not the only two streets that we're going to look at. And with that, I think I'll turn it over to Mr. Fain, that's okay. That's okay. Ready. Bruce. Um, Parker Street sidewalk job, uh, we completed the uh, concrete portion um, roughly on November 6th to uh, High Pine. Um, the guys have been out loaming and seeding uh, for about, probably about a week and a half now. Um, quite a bit of loaming and seeding based on some of the elevations of the sidewalk out um, at that location. Uh, the guys are doing well. Uh, residents are happy. We completed the uh, driveways um, today out there for all the residents so everybody has easy access uh, to their homes um, so we should be wrapping up the uh, loaming and seating hopefully by Wednesday and going to circle back and uh, hit that 80 foot wall section and uh, hopefully be done by the uh, the end of next week with the uh, with the entire project up to that point awesome that would be great <clears throat> yep um, Highway Division has been completing uh, many catch basin repairs on mains. We've uh, gotten them all done um, on the mains. We're circling uh, back around now and getting all to the secondaries. Um, so we probably got um, in our work order system probably another 20 that are on our secondaries, but um, completing those um, while the good weather is, is with us. Um, we've kind of broken up. Um, into two crews. I have uh, one crew doing the catch basins and another crew going out and asphalting behind them and doing pothole work orders. Um, so things are working out well. Hopefully the weather stays with us and uh, the plants stay open for another month or two. Um, other than that, uh, vehicle update. Um, myself and Mr. Langoni have reached out to MHQ um, 
over the past month on uh, uh, a fairly regular basis trying to get a delivery date on uh, truck 77 and 78. Um, they have not been able to give us an actual uh, delivery date as of yet. Um, so we'll continue to reach out to them, uh, pressure them to see if we get some kind of date. Um, unfortunately, when we do reach out to them, um, it's based on an order. Um, they usually wait till they get 25 trucks um, before they um, before they order them. I know they're on order. It's just actually um, getting a, a date from them. So I will keep you guys um, up to date and uh, Mr. Parent on when those those vehicles are going to be delivered. Um, so I'm hopeful in the next. Uh, um, Mid, mid to late December, we should have those trucks in hand. So we'll keep, uh, we'll keep on them. Um, as far as building reports, uh, we had seen um, some significant savings with our LED project for the center lights. Um, the usual bill with those metal halide lights that we uh, used to have was roughly about $257 a month. Um, we're down to about uh, $31 a month. <laughs> so, um, Mr. Parent shared some of the bills with me today, and uh, so some of the little things are, are working out great for us. Um, so we'll continue to uh, hit those numbers one more time. Two seventy something. Yeah, two fifty seven, thirty nine, and then the bill this month was uh, thirty one dollars and eighty cents. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. The background in that was that was that was one of the projects that was reviewed at a very short payback on yeah. it. We went ahead, I believe, with our own funds. Those operational ones. And it just went ahead and made the change mm -hmm. because it was a no-brainer to go ahead and relatively low cost yep, yep. to put it's in just, the LEDs. Yeah, just yeah. a matter of taking out the old ballast, throwing in the new LED lights with our town electrician. Took them a couple days, but that's worked out well. Um, it was also, uh, we purchased a bunch of bulbs, um, especially for the library and town hall. Um, another investment of about four or five hundred dollars. Um, that we're looking at just to take out of our operational um, to uh, retrofit some of the other interior lights um, at the town hall and the library. So hopefully we'll see some savings there also. We don't qualify for a rebate program for that? I, we do get a very little little amount, um, but some of the, especially some of the bulbs that we're purchasing, um, we go through a lot of bulbs at the library. There's many different kinds of bulbs and um, between hours, hours of operations, um, they seem to be the life expectancy on some of those bulbs is very, very minimal. So um, hopefully with these new LEDs um, and everything else we're doing, uh, it should be, uh, you know, uh, upfront cost is going to be a little bit more, but long term it should pay for itself. So, so how do we monetize that for um, appropriations? Is that a, a bullet item you can bring up? When it when it's appropriate because it's gonna it's coming out of our operations mm -hmm. for buildings right but it's going the results gonna come from utility right so it's higher higher building maintenance right. lower utilities right it's something they wouldn't necessarily know about unless we right. put a bullet together yep. or do something to yep. you know bring it to their attention right. it's something that we certainly could say, hey, you know what? List of projects that we did, and yeah, at least at least so people understand. You know, we're willing yep. to take out of our building maintenance, and we understand the total picture. Yeah, that this helps our utility costs. Right, it's a different bucket, but for us, all our buckets are one. Right, we're trying to I save mean, the town yeah. money. And this one's a really easy one to uh, to kind of quantify because it has its own meter. Like we did the maple shade steam traps uh, this summer, mm. when we have a projected savings on what we should be saving. But because the whole, yeah, I mean, there's other variables that go along with that. We can bring those items up to all the projects that we did. And, and I think it's important. Otherwise, you know, people wouldn't really know. So right. some of those we should at least highlight, I think. Right. What awesome. we have done in some cases, like the steam trap work that we did, we talked with the town accountant, and, and she recognized going into the project it was a energy efficiency project. So we actually funded the cost of that through our utility account. Mm -hmm. knowing that the savings were going to go directly back into the utility mm -hmm. account. So that, we still want to call attention to it, obviously, but at least that addressed well, the issue can of... Can we buy the bulbs for the uh, utility? Utility account? No, no, no. We, we can look not. at that. It's, we it can may look not at be that. too late to look at... Yeah. I mean, yeah. really, because like you said, the savings yeah. is, is coming. Yeah. Right. I mean, as that. we do do um, um, uh, 
um, repairs uh, to exterior fixtures and everything else with the wall packs, the metal halides, we do switch those out to LEDs. So we are proactive in that aspect. We don't necessarily do do everything, but... No, but know. when you're doing a library, it's right. some, some major right. project. So. Yeah. Keep awesome. That. And it's fairly standard practice now. If we have to replace a light fixture, Bruce, you right. know, we will look at, even if it, the payback is somewhat long, it makes sense anytime you're doing a replacement, you have to make that investment yeah. and make the switch over at that time. So that's, mm -hmm. if the payback isn't there entirely on its own, we're... Right. We're moving ahead when it's time to replace that unit. Yep. Um, next item I have is Town Hall Renovations uh, project um, started today. Um, we started uh, getting everything ready in the bathroom, so demolitions will be starting tomorrow. Um, so that will be moving forward. We're going to be starting to make a little bit of noise over there, uh, but hopefully we'll, we'll keep everybody happy. Um, during the process and uh, keep you guys informed of <coughs> the progress progress we're making over there. Um, other than that, um, senior center generator. Um, hopefully that unit should be in by the end of this month uh, to get that installed, and then we can begin the process of putting the roof over there um, and getting that um, facility some backup power. Um, and that's all I have. Okay. Anything on the town engineers from Dan's perspective, or are we good to go? Um, I think I really covered that with the crack ceiling and the roadway work. So, okay. Okay. Yeah, we're, now that we're out of the construction season, we're catching up on some of the things that have been on the list for longer they should, than they should have, but no, we're now gaining on them. Excellent. Any other business? Nope. Dan? Well, yeah. The only That's other great. question I might have is like, uh, we're working with. Uh, Getting grease tramps put in would. Uh, we started that. Yeah. As I just said, now that we're back, <laughs> it's time to refocus some effort. So yeah, I did have some early conversations we had talked about previously between um, Mr. Gorman as Board of Health Chair and right. talked about the idea of working together. But other than getting some examples from other communities, I haven't advanced with right, that. Right, but I mean, with the sewer, yep. with the Springfield sewer and water system making us uh, uh Cold permitter, right? I mean, that's going to help keep the grease on Absolutely. our lines. And the grease, you know, grease can be one of the primary reasons that we get backups and problems. So yeah, right. I agree. Okay. Schedule another meeting. Thirtieth. Monday, November 30th, 5 p.m. at the service building. Anything else? I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second the motion. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.